Thrice the branded calf had mewed. Thrice and once the hedge pig whined. Harper cries, tis time, tis time. Round about the cauldron go, in the poison entrail throw. Toad that under cold stone, days and nights has thirty-one. Sultered venom, sleeping gut, bold first in the charm plot. Double, double, <laughs> toiling double, trouble. Fire burning, cauldron bubble. <laughs> Fillet of a fenny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worm's sting, for a charm, or lizard's legs <laughs> and hallet's wing. For a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. Double, double, double toil and, and trouble, fire burning cauldron bubble. Scale of a dragon, tooth of a wolf. Witch's mummy, mong, gulp of the ravine, salt sea shark. Root of hemlock, digs in the dark. Liver of blaspheming Jew. Gal of goat and slips of you. Slipper in the moon's eclipse. Nose of Turk and Tartar's lips. Finger of birth, strangled babe. Fish delivered by a drab. Make the gruel thick and slab. Add thereto a tiger's cauldron. The ingredients of our cauldron. Double, 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 double toil and trouble. Fire burning cauldron bubble. Cool it with baboon blood, then the charm is firm and good. Oh, well done. I command your pains, and everyone shall share in thy gain. Double, double, <laughs> double toil and trouble, fire burning, cauldron bubble. conjure you by that which you profess, however you come to know it. Answer me, even till destruction, dis oh, destruction sickens. Answer me to what I ask. Speak. Demand. We'll answer. Say if thou hast rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Call them, let me see it. The poor and so's blood that hath eaten, her nine ferals grease that sweeten, from the murderers give it throw into the flame. Come high or low, thyself in office deathly show. Your father is dead, and what will you do now? How wilt thou do for a father? As birds do, mother. What, with worms and flies? The fly yet, and I mean, and so do they. Poor bird, thou dost never fear the net nor line, the pitfall nor the gin. Why should I, mother? Poor birds, they are not set for me, for yes. my father is not dead, <laughs> for yes. all you're saying. Yes, he is dead, and how wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Then you'll buy him to sell him again. Thou speakest with all thy wit, and yet, I faith, with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Every one that is a traitor must be hanged. And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Every one. Who, mu who must hang them? Why, the honest man. And liars and swears are fools, for there are liars and swears enough to beat the honest man and hang them up. Now God help thee, but what wilt thou do without a father? If he were dead, you'd weep for him. If you would not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. Poor prattler, how thou talkest. Bless you, fair dame, I am not to you know, though in your state of honor I am perfect. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. If you will take a homely man's advice, be not found here, hence with your little ones. To fret you thus, methinks I am too savage. Two words to you were fell cruelty, which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you, I dare abide no longer. I have done no harm, but I remember now I am in this earthly world, <coughs> where to do harm is often laudable, to do sometimes account it dangerous and folly. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say I have done no harm? What are these faces? It is your husband. I hope in no place so unsanctified where thou mayest find him. He is a traitor. Thou liest, thou shabby villain. You ape. He's treachery. <laughs> he has killed me, mother. <laughs> Run away, I pray you. Murder! Yeah, take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> Strength will
will lack the siege to scorn. Here, let them lie till the famine and the ag you eat them up. Yay! <laughs> oh, <laughs> were they not with those that should be ours? We might have met them dareful, beard to beard, and beat them backward home. Zah! <laughs> I have almost forgot the taste of fears. I have almost forgot the taste of fears. The time has been would have cooled my senses. To hear a night shriek of my fellow pair, I have supped full of horrors. Wherefore was that cry? would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps this petty pace day to day until the last syllable of recorded time. All our yesterdays have lighted. have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow. A, play, a poor player that struts and frets his way upon the stage until he is heard, heard no more. more. It, is a tale. it is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury that signifies nothing. Thou comest to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. Gracious, my lord, I should report by what your say I saw. As it did stand upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham. And on me thought, the wood began to move. Liar, slave! Let me do your wrath, but not be so. <laughs> thou, if thou speakest false upon the next tree, thou shalt hang alive till famine cling to thee. <sighs> if thy speech be sooth, I care not if dost thou as much for me. <clears throat> I pull in resolution to begin, to doubt the equivocation of a fiend. Ring the alarm bell, blow wind, come rack, at least we'll die with harness on our back. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on my own tour while I see the limes, the gashes, do better upon them? Turn, thou hand, turn. Of all men I have avoided thee, but get thee back. My soul is too much charged with the blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword, thou bloodier villain. Thou loosest labor, as easy mayest thou the entrenched air, with thy keen sword impress, as make me bleed. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests, I bear a charm life, which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair <laughs> thy charm, and let, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee that Macduff was a un from his ripped, mother's womb. Was from his mother's womb, untimely ripped. A curse be the word, the, the tongue that tells me so, for hath cow my better part of men, and be these <coughs> juggling fiends no more believe that palter us with a double sense. <laughs> they speak the word of promise to our ear and break it to our hope. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the time. We shall have thee, as our rarer monsters are, Painted upon a pole and under it, here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet while I. Were to be baited. Young Malcolm's feet, baited with the rabble's curse, through burning wood be come to Dunsinane, and thou oppose being of no woman born. Yet I will try my last before my body and throw my warlike shield, lay on Macduff, and let Dan be him that first cries, Hold! Enough.
But Doc, I mean, your noble son is missing. My lord, your son has paid a soldier's debt. He lived but until, only until he was a man. And the witch no sooner had his prowess confirmed in an unshrinking station where he fought, but he died a man. Is he is dead? I brought off the field. Your cause of sorrow must not be measured by his worth, for then it hath no end. Had he his hurts before? I on the front. Well, then God's soldier be he. Had I as many sons as I had heirs, I would not wish them a fair death. And so as Nell is more. Well, he has much sorrow, and that I'll spend for him. He's worth no more. He's paid his he's paid his part and had his score. And so God be with him. Here comes near a Hell, hell, king, for so thou art. Here stands the head of the usurper. Time is free, I see thee composed with thy kingdom's pearl. Let speak my salutation in thy mind, sweet voices I desire, aloud with more, or aloud with mine, hail king of Scotland. Hail, hail king of Scotland. We shall not spend a large expanse of time before we reckon with your loved ones, and become even with you. My fame in Kingsman, henceforth, be Earl, the first ever that Scotland has such an honor named. Call forth our friends who were cursed abroad. Call forth our friends who were cursed abroad from the murdering hands of our dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as tis thought, with self and violent hands, took off her own life. This and what need needful else that calls upon us by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure and time and place. And we thank you to all and to each one who comes to see us at Stone. 